You might think that Toyota is the most boring car brand out there, but it turns out they've made some of the coolest cars ever. You just have never heard of them. Why? Well, that's because Toyota never sold them in the US. And that's unforgivable. Toyota's best car on sale today is an actual rally racing car with license plates. And it just isn't available stateside. But there are rumors that Toyota is bringing something for us Americans, something that very well might redeem them. So let's take a look at Toyota's history of legendary cars deemed too amazing for the United States and see if this rumored new sports car is enough to forgive Toyota's sins. I'm Guff, this is Albon, let's get started. You've heard of the Camry, the RAV4, the Corolla. They're the boxes on wheels that all of us drive to work, to the store. Quiet, fuel efficient, and reliable. And it's those traits that define Toyota as a brand. Well, for you maybe, but not for me. When I hear Corolla, I think back nearly four decades to cars like the 1985 AE86 Black Limited, an ultra rare version of the already awesome Hachiroku Corolla, complete with the same impeccable chassis and stout 4AG engine, but now blacked out and super stealthy. Japan exclusive, of course. Or maybe the original 70 series Land Cruiser. It was the foundation for the off-roading legend of the Land Cruiser going forward. The 70 series cemented Toyota's reputation in building some of the most rugged and reliable cars out there. They sold the 70 series nearly everywhere, even Canada, but the US, nah. Sorry. Or how about the 1991 Starlet GT Turbo? This was a tiny little front wheel drive hot hatch with a 1.3 liter turbo engine making 130 horsepower. Which may not sound like much until you realize the car weighed 1900 pounds. It was a tiny little turbo rocket that rivaled the best from companies like Honda and Suzuki. It even had active suspension that could be changed on the fly in the early 90s. And as you can probably guess, it was only available in Japan. Another L for us in the States. This list goes on. The 1JZ Turbo Toyota Soarer, which was sold in the US as the Lexus SC300, but only with a non-turbo 3-liter 2J. Or the 5-liter V12 Toyota Century, a car that was literally made for an emperor. Or the Mark II Toyota Chaser, a 1JZ Turbo Sedan, the AE111 Sprinter, a hotted up version of the later front-wheel drive Corollas, complete with the famous 20-valve 4AG blacktop engine. And of course, the king of forbidden Toyotas in my eyes, the ST205 Toyota Celica GT4. The GT4 Celicas of previous generations were available in the US, but if you've seen our episode on the history of the Celica, then you know. The sixth generation Celica was cut at the knees. Slow sales across the Celica range meant that the ST205 GT4, despite being the best Celica yet, an all-wheel drive rally monster that kept pace with the Supra, just didn't make financial sense in the US market. For Europe and the Eastern markets though, the competition all-wheel drive system and 252 horsepower turbo 3S GE engine were a go. And 2,500 units of the ST205 GT4 were made for some very lucky car enthusiasts. That Celica the GT4 was a symbol of Toyota's peak rally technology, a sport they had absolutely dominated. But from that point on, Toyota really fell off the sports car wagon. Real enthusiast products were few and far between, and Toyota really took on the role of being the practical, if not boring, choice to make in a car. And Toyota's long relationship with rally was mostly confined to history after the end of the Celica GT4 era. At the turn of the century, Toyota had dropped out of the World Rally Championship, and for over a decade, they never even thought about coming back. But then, in 2015, Toyota was working on consolidating all of their separate racing divisions under one name, Toyota Gazoo Racing. And with that consolidation, they announced to the world that they would be returning to rally with an all new car built by Gazoo. Akio Toyota himself promised the world that this would be a ground up, all Toyota homologation race car, just like many of the greatest Toyotas before it. But the Celica? was long discontinued, and the only sports car they really had on the market was the new 86. But the 86 was neither compact enough nor ready for all-wheel drive, and so it couldn't serve the purpose that the Gazoo racing team needed it for. There was one model that did, kind of. That was the Toyota Yaris. Now, the Yaris is not a car that you or I would associate with the more hardcore aspects of racing, but what it was was a subcompact front-wheel drive platform, one that was about the right size and shape 
for a rally car. But the Yaris didn't come with all-wheel drive and certainly wasn't built with any engines that screamed performance. Oh, and there was one other thing. There were two totally different Yaris's available on sale. Most Yaris's worldwide were built on a similar global platform and were available as a sedan or a hatchback. But in North America, for some reason, the Yaris was a rebadged Mazda 2. Well, not all of them. Some of them were Scions and it depended on what body style you got. It was really confusing if I'm being honest. But it doesn't matter. We don't care about those Yaris's. The Japanese and European market Yaris's were true Toyotas, but they were also cheap, slow four-door hatchbacks. And so, Gazoo Racing got to work. It all started a few years earlier, in 2013. Gazoo Racing took the Japanese XP130 Yaris, also called the Toyota Vitz in Japan, and basically chopped it up. Gone was the 100 horsepower, 1.3 liter four-cylinder, and in its place, a turbocharged four making over 380 horsepower. That was attached to a six-speed sequential transmission, driving all four wheels. And with a curb weight of just over 2,600 pounds, this thing was an absolute rocket ship. Gazoo Racing debuted this new Yaris WRC at the 2017 Monte Carlo Rally. And out the gate, the little Yaris wasn't exactly breaking records, landing a 10th place finish at the event. But at Rally Sweden, just a few weeks later, the Gazoo Racing team really found their groove and took home a gold. Just two races into their very first season, and they already had a first place trophy. And throughout the 2017 season, they stayed competitive. They even took another gold at Rally Finland. But by the end of the season, they had lost out to the incumbent Hyundai and M Sport team. But while the Yaris WRC may have not won it all in its very first year, it certainly proved that it was a viable platform for rally racing. And it proved that Gazoo had real potential in WRC. For the 2018 season, the car was tweaked and improved, and Gazoo Racing was hungry for the win. The start of the season was pretty bad, with their best finishes being one third place and one fourth place. But then, in Rally Argentina, Gazoo's Oit Tanak rocketed the Yaris WRC to a first place finish. And then, they did it again in Finland, and again in Germany, and again in Turkey, and then again at the final race at Rally Australia. And with five first place finishes to their name, Toyota Gazoo Racing and the little Yaris WRC took home first place in the manufacturer's championship, narrowly beating out the impressive Hyundai team by 27 points. Toyota and the boys at Gazoo had done it. Nearly two decades after they had scrapped the old Celica GT4, Toyota took the diminutive little Yaris and proved again to the world that they could dominate on the rally stage. But hold on, you must be saying. It's great and all that they were winning races, but Akio Toyota promised us a homologated road car. And since the inception of the Yaris WRC, there was no sign, not even a mention, of a Yaris rally car that we could drive. But now, with Gazoo Racing having proven their capabilities, Toyota was ready to greenlight the production version of the Yaris WRC. And with full access to Toyota's extensive R&D departments, the Gazoo engineers had free reign to do basically anything they wanted. What they did was a bit out of the ordinary. You see, the XP130 Yaris platform that the rally car was based off of was getting a bit old in the tooth. Having originally been released in 2010, Toyota was now transitioning to all new high-tech modular platforms called global architectures. And so Gazoo Racing and their brilliant engineering nerds took the all new Toyota GAB global architecture designed for small subcompact cars and combined it with Toyota's GAC architecture designed for slightly larger hatchbacks. Putting it perhaps a little too simply, they basically took the front end of the all new unreleased Toyota Yaris and welded it to the rear end of the all new Toyota Corolla. And that might sound strange, but what it enabled them to do was retain a ultra lightweight body while ditching the Yaris's dinky rear suspension in favor for the multi-link setup that was found in the Corolla architecture. And it gave them enough space for the one crucial ingredient they needed, all wheel drive. And with this new Frankenstein chassis, they weren't bound to the Yaris's original four door layout. So they dropped the rear door and made it a two-door hatchback. And then they said, well, if we can change it from four-door to two-door, we can probably also change what it's made out of. And so the engineers converted about 10% of the entire body of the car from steel to aluminum, saving over 50 pounds. And where they couldn't use aluminum, they employed thinner, high tensile strength steel to keep the chassis strong while minimizing weight. And then they said, 
Well, while we're in here, we may as well add some carbon. And so the roof of this new Yaris was made with forged carbon fiber. Yes, the stuff that Lamborghini uses in their cars, which saved about eight pounds on the highest point of the car. By the time they were done with it, this new rally spec Yaris shared only four parts with the standard Yaris. The headlights, door mirrors, taillights, and the antenna. But it wasn't just the chassis where Gazoo went all out. The old 1.6 liter was good, but they knew they could do better. So the engineers created a clean sheet, all new design for a turbocharged inline three cylinder engine. This engine named the G16E was still a 1.6 liter, but with just three cylinders, Gazoo Racing managed to make it more compact and lighter than the outgoing Ford. In rally spec, the engine made nearly 400 horsepower, but in the road car, the G16 put out 257 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. That power was of course sent to all four wheels. Thanks to Toyota's first, all all new sports all wheel drive system in nearly 20 years. The system uses mechanical and electronically controlled differentials to change how much power is split between the front and rear wheels. And thanks to some trick computer magic, the driver can pick between a 60 40 front to rear split in normal mode, 50 50 in track mode, or go full Hoonigan with a 30 70 split in sport mode. That means, ladies and gentlemen, you can now drift a Toyota Yaris. What a time to be alive. The system is called GR4, paying homage to the last awesome all-wheel drive system from Toyota, GT4, from the bygone days of the Celica GT4. The GR Yaris then is a truly special vehicle from Toyota. And it's fair to say that a car this special probably can't be built alongside your mom's Toyota Yaris. Well, you'd be right. The production GR Yaris is made in a factory that has more pedigree than almost any other factory on the planet, Motomachi. If that name sounds familiar, then perhaps you've heard of this special little Toyota called the Lexus LFA. Yes, the little GR Yaris is made on the same hallowed grounds as the LFA supercar, and alongside some other very special Toyotas, like the Toyota Mirai hydrogen electric car and the Lexus LC500. In fact, Gazoo Racing has a special corner of that entire factory just for GR product. And it's there that the Yaris's unique engine and forged carbon fiber parts are built and assembled, all by specialized hand-picked craftsmen from Toyota's ranks. But let's be honest, all this engineering matters little if it doesn't translate to how the car drives on the road. The GR Yaris lives up to the hype. Evo Magazine gave the car five out of five stars, saying that it had defied critics and was a truly unique driving experience. Car and Driver said it put the hot back in hot hatch and Road and Track called the GR Yaris a life changing experience. That is praise that neither the GR Super with its burly 382 horsepower inline six nor the GR86 with its lightweight playfulness could live up to. The GR Yaris is the best road car to ever come from Gazoo Racing. Hell, it might be the best Toyota to come out in over a decade. And it was engineered and built 100% by Toyota themselves. And yet the car has one fatal Flaw. A flaw not on its own accord, but rather a flaw that it inherited. Inherited from the 70 series Land Cruiser, the AE86 Black Limited, the Starlet GT Turbo, the 1JZ Soarer, the Mark II Chaser, the AE111, the Caldina GT4. The GR Yaris is not sold in the United States of America. And that is truly a travesty. Toyota's greatest car in a generation, an absolutely unique gem that proves to the world what Toyota is capable of, dangled in front of us, lay just out of reach. The GR Yaris made its way to Japan, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and a few other select countries. Hell, it even made its way just south of us to Mexico because they wanted it so bad, they did a limited run there. But alas, in the US and Canada, we were forgotten again, but it seems there's a savior lurking in the shadows. Over the last few years, there have been whispers, faint mullings that Gazoo Racing had another GR product in the works. And then in the first days of 2020, months even before the whole world was halted by the COVID pandemic, something happened that spun the automotive rumor mail into a frenzy. Toyota USA took advantage of the most authentic news platform ever, Twitter, and they retweeted a post from Jalopnik and asked North Americans if another hot hatch was something that 
we may have wanted. God forbid, Toyota, we have more than two or three hot hatches in the entire US market. Yes, Toyota, we don't just want it, we need it. People got talking and retweeting, but eventually Toyota's Twitter fund ran its course. And at some point, the rumors went silent. It seemed to just be a what if scenario that enthusiasts got talking about for a day, a marketing exercise. But then later in February, the UK magazine Auto Express leaked news that there was another GR product in the works, a GR Corolla. And it was not only coming to markets like the UK who already enjoyed the stellar GR Yaris, it was coming to the US of A. And let me tell you, I about lost my damn mind when I heard that. The potential of having a GR Yaris sibling stateside meant that we could finally have an authentic Toyota sports car made only by Toyota. Something that really hadn't existed in the modern era. But then, like with the first rumors, the GR Corolla frenzy in the States kinda died down and everybody forgot about it. By the month of May though, Toyota wanted to let us know that they weren't messing around. And they tweeted that the US would be getting a hot hatch to call its own. Of course, with pandemic car shortages and production slowdowns, rumors once again fizzled out. And it wasn't until October of 2021 that we would finally see a glimpse of the elusive GR Corolla. Toyota posted an interior picture of the standard Corolla hatchback with the caption, keep them guessing. It seemed innocuous at first, but uh, forum members with perhaps too much time on their hands decided to conduct a Sherlock level investigation. They found G16 labeled on the dashboard, the engine code of the three cylinder in the GR Yaris, a navigation screen showing GR4 road, hinting at a all wheel drive GR4 system, the climate control displaying 268, a horsepower number that was frankly within the realm of the G16 engine. And lastly, and perhaps the most obvious, a freaking Corolla rally racing in the background. So this was it, the most definitive information to date, straight from the mouth of Toyota themselves. Off-roading, all-wheel drive, and that awesome three-cylinder engine. All of the magic ingredients of the GR Yaris, now with a Corolla twist. Not to mention a potential horsepower number that rivals cars like the Golf GTI and Subaru WRX. Surely, it would only be a matter of days before we got a press release, right? Wrong. Toyota did what they had been doing this entire journey. Just a tease, and then radio silence. It's too much to bear, Toyota. For God's sake, our checkbooks are at the ready. But the only information we got was months later, in December, by way of the reputable news medium, Instagram. Another teaser, but this one was the most obvious one yet. Step out from the shadows and into the spotlight. This was captioned over a picture of a Corolla hatchback with some very intentional lighting. In the corner, just outside of the light, was an unmistakable hot hatch donned in the iconic Gazoo Racing camouflage. And then, if that wasn't enough, a few weeks later, Toyota posted a fast cut video showing off the new GR86. And in the middle of the video, for just a single frame, was a full-size picture of the GR Corolla. This was our best view yet. And it was finally concrete evidence that the GR Yaris was real and it was looking production ready. And that's all Toyota has really said so far about the GR Corolla. No dates, no price, no specs, no real information. But all of this is enough to confidently say that the GR Corolla, it's real and it is happening and it is going to be special, I think. It may not be the GR Yaris that we've all been begging for, but if it shares the same DNA, then Toyota has a shot at making their best modern car yet in the USA. And Toyota, we know you can do it. You've proven it to us. Surely it should be simple to recreate that magic in the Corolla. But let's be honest, it never is really quite that simple. The GR Yaris is a pretty hardcore enthusiast car for this day and age. And if you take away all of the amazing performance, the GR Yaris really is just an expensive economy car. And in a market as cutthroat as the US, there's a real chance that the GR Corolla will be a significantly watered down version of the Yaris. Trading its enthusiast focus for more amenities, more features, more bloat. Maybe it won't have the forged carbon fiber roof or the aggressive wide body, but I really hope Toyota doesn't skimp on the use of aluminum, the chassis stiffening, the fantastic steering, and of course the awesome electronically controlled all wheel drive system. And by Jove, it better have a manual transmission attached to that turbo three cylinder. Whatever it may be, the GR Corolla has real potential. The potential to not only be a fantastic driver's car, a future classic, but also the potential to prove to the world that Toyota doesn't need help or partnerships to make a fantastic world-class sports car. Well, that or 
this could all just be one big marketing flop. The Integra announcement all over again. But I have high hopes. Maybe that's just the Toyota fanboy side of me. But if there's ever been a time for Toyota to come out with a car like this, it's now. A final hurrah for Toyota to flaunt their feathers and show that despite the EV revolution that is quickly approaching, Toyota ended the ice age with their heads held high with a badass rally car in the showrooms. Even the American ones. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.